What does it take to become an entrepreneur today in America? So many people talk about living the dream, but yet so few are able to achieve it. What's going on guys? My name is William Doria, self-made millionaire entrepreneur for the last 12 years, and I'm here to share with you today six secrets to entrepreneurial success. The first one is fail and fail quickly. Now, what I mean by that is if you're in business and you have tried something different and it doesn't work, you don't stop. You do it again. You try something else. And if that doesn't work, you try something else and you keep trying or failing until something sticks. Think of it like this. You're making spaghetti. You take out some noodles and this is what some people do. They throw it at the wall, right? Not the whole thing. They throw some at the wall and if it sticks, it's ready, right? You're basically throwing ideas like spaghetti noodles. You're throwing stuff at the wall, right? Majority of it's not gonna stick, but the ones that do make all the difference in the world. Number two, learn how to leverage, not just money, but time and money see me and you can only do so much ourselves guys we can only work say 110 120 hours a week like i know that you probably don't do that right now but i'm saying if we wanted to it's hard we could not work 200 hours a week if we wanted to that's my point guys there is so much that can be leveraged out in form of time, in form of a loan repayment, in form of something that can get you there faster. For instance, say you were selling a product and say your product was a thousand dollars and you could sell maybe six or four to six products per month. Like you could go as many door to knocking and knocking and knocking and you just can't really get past six, right? But if you were to hire say three people, five people, 20 people, you guys get the idea. And you were to get a $250 commission or even a 50% commission split based off of say 20 people, you just generated 50% of what those people's time and efforts actually put out. And that includes all of their failures that you didn't have time to do. The next part of leverage is financial leverage. And since I'm in real estate, I'm gonna use real estate as an example. So I find a rental property. Instead of saying, I am going to save for the next X amount of most likely years to pay for this house in full, I instead am either going to A, put down a 20% down payment as a rental property down payment and go ahead and acquire it now, or B, I'm going to get a hard money lender with little to nothing out of pocket, and then I'm going to renovate it, and then I'm gonna go back to a bank, do a cash out refi, and bam, I'm out of pocket, no money, I've got a cash flowing rental property, and I didn't have to save for the next five, six, seven, eight, 20 years, 30 years, in order to pay for this property. I can let a tenant pay it off, and probably have it paid off in about 10 years, give or take, depending on your market. And I can start that process now, like as in tomorrow, as in you write this stuff down, you shut off YouTube and tomorrow you start making phone calls and start finding motivated sellers. But you won't do it, will you? Because 99.99% of the people I'm talking to won't do it. They say, that's really cool, I'm motivated, that's really inspirational, but yet tomorrow you'll get up, same time, go to work, same time, go to lunch, same time, get off, same time, do the same thing next week and the next week, Look forward to the weekend, look forward to your time off, look forward to your little vacation every year, and you'll continue to do that until you're 65. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the person that's motivated. I'm talking to the person who wants to get crap done. I'm talking to the person that's tired of working that nine to five, that wants to get out, that has the hustle, that has the motivation behind them. That's who I'm talking to. Number three on our list is you can properly manage risk. Now, we all know the stats, guys, the entrepreneur stats of nine out of 10 fail or 98% of all small businesses fail within X amount of time frame. Guys, we see that, okay? Here's the beauty in America. If you're an entrepreneur, you try something and you fail. We're gonna go back to step one. What do you think you do again? You try something else. If that business fails, what do you think you do? You get up and you rebuild and you try something else. Guys, 
You can try as many times as you possibly can. You only have to make it happen and work one time for all of it to be worth it. Entrepreneurship is a lot of work. It does involve risk. Those gurus out there saying that entrepreneurship doesn't involve risk is feeding you a load of you know what. It's risky. I've lost tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars in certain aspects of my business, but I've never had a business to this day, fortunately, actually go under. Do you know why? Because I put the most ridiculous amounts of effort into a business to make it work. Like literally, my business plan, failure is not number five or six. It doesn't exist on it. I will do this until I make it happen, until it works. You could take the same business, good product, good product, different owners. This guy will make it work. He will work as hard as he can. He will bring in help. He will make it work no matter what. And this guy is going to try his best. <laughs> He's going to try really hard. And if it doesn't work, his fallback is this nine to five that he told his boss, I'm going to leave, but I might be back and please hold my spot. This guy is going to fail and he is a part of the statistic. You are not. Number four on our list is time management. Now guys, this is one that is so incredibly important. If I were to audit you as an entrepreneur in your new business and say today you're working say 10 hours, 12 hours today, and I were to stand over your shoulder, how much more time do you think I could actually find in your day that you're being non-productive, guys? Guys, you're only lying to yourself. If you tell me that you've been productive all day, BS. You were on Facebook. You were watching cat videos on YouTube. You were doing something that day. It might have been you were staring in the corner for the last 45 minutes not doing a damn thing. You weren't even thinking. You were just staring in the corner. Like, guys... I'm gonna find something to be able to say, you weren't actually doing eight hours of work today. Guys, I have a saying wrote on my computer. Let me read it to you, okay? It's Parkinson's Law. And it states, the adage that work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. That means, guys, if you have an eight hour day and you have five things to do on that, you better have more than five things, by the way. But if you have five things to do and you have eight hours to do it, you most likely will finish up your five things to do list by the end of the day. That's what that means. It's because you subconsciously stretch out your things to do list to take up the space allotted for that day. So what am I trying to say and what is my point to this? My point is be aware of all the time you're spending on a particular activity and ask yourself this, out of my things to do list, if I could only pick the most important ones to do and do those first, what would make the biggest impact of the day and do those first if you can? A lot of people's things to do list is filled with what I call fluff. It doesn't necessarily have to be done. For instance, maybe you go to Home Depot four days a week. Could you cut it down and go to Home Depot say one day a week and get everything you need and literally make a list and write down HD on it and say, oh, I need zip ties. Oh, I need a paintbrush. Oh, I need this. And have a list and go one day a week, not four days a week. Do you see how much time and money that you just saved yourself as an entrepreneur? Guys, as an entrepreneur, the number one most important asset that you have is your time. Number five, guys, I use this every single day and it is so imperative that you imply this into your life, especially if you're going to become an entrepreneur. And that is have written daily goals. Guys, my dad made fun of me for years, many, many years, up to about three years ago until he realized it actually worked, that written goals on stickies actually work. I do them every single day. This is not something I wrote up for this video. I actually did this today. I am on number, let's see here, six out of 10 of my things today so far, and I will complete this list by the end of the day. If something comes up and I cannot get this list completed, tomorrow, the list I've already started for tomorrow, it will carry on to the next day. And for whatever reason, 
If I have an item on my things to do list that I wrote down daily and I just can't seem to get it done. Here's an example. I have a rental property right now that is under an insurance claim for a roof right now, right? We have really bad windstorm in North Texas and it ripped off some shingles. Anyways, I can't write replace roof Wednesday. Like, and I can't have, you know, the, the, the guys go out there and bid it and then have it repaired and then send it into the insurance company and get a check for it and have that check cleared. Like, I can't do all that on Wednesday, for instance, on one day, right? So what I did was I have another list. It's called long-term. Okay, and long term, when I say long term, guys, I don't mean five years, I don't mean 10 years. Like, my long term to me is like two weeks, like a week, maybe three weeks. I guess it could be a month. I don't want to see it on my desk for the next month. But the point is this is you see it all the time. Because if I were to put that same note in my phone, I don't sit at my desk every day and I don't see it because I have to physically go in my phone, go to the note section open it up, scroll through, and say, oh yeah, I forgot about that. No, it's sitting on my desk. Matter of fact, I put it next to my mouse on purpose. So when I reach for my mouse, I am already basically looking at my things to do list. So there is no viable excuse where you're not getting things done because you're staring at your things to do list all day long. Everything important, everything imperative that things to do list is getting done on time and if you notice on every one of those lists, as you get it done, this is very important, as you get them done, you cross them off and have another list already for tomorrow that you are already adding to it as stuff comes up in your head. Number six, and this is one of the biggest reasons that entrepreneurs go out of business other than trying to build their business too fast. You must be willing to work twice as many hours as you're currently working for half of what you're making right now. Let that sink in for a minute. Twice as many, say you're working 40 hours a week. I consider a 40 hour week a lazy man's work week or women's work week for that matter. 40 hours a week, say you're working 40 hours a week. Expect no less if you're a true hustler like you should be and you wanna actually make your business work, expect to work no less than 80 hours per week and expect no more than half of what you're currently getting right now. I want you to do this. I want you to ask any truly successful entrepreneur this. This question, will I be working twice as many hours and should I be expecting half pay or negative pay that's a real thing guys you work 80 hours a week and you made a negative amount because of all the money energy time you've been putting into this business you're in a negative monetary amount by the end of the week the end of the month end of the year sometimes the amount of hustle it takes to build a business from ground up is astonishing and i've never seen or heard of this actually being taught in school on a reliable scale. I hear business is hard work and you have to start from the bottom and you have to hustle hard, but nobody actually says you're gonna be working your face off. You might be working 100 hours a week. You might be eating dirt and living in your parents' basement, but you know what? You're going to come up. You're going to make it. It's going to take time and you're probably going to have to drive a 2001 Oldsmobile. <laughs> As an example, guys, Guys, if you got a really nice car and you wanna become an entrepreneur, that car is probably gonna to go to somebody else that's not an entrepreneur, if you get my drift. You need to learn how to humble yourself as a newly appointed entrepreneur. And it starts with the vehicle that you drive. It starts with the BS watch that you're wearing. It starts with the place, the over ridiculous house that you might be living in. It starts with you not paying $300 a month for cable. It starts by you not getting a new cell phone every single year just because it's the new thing. It starts by you not wearing designer clothes just because your favorite rapper wears designer clothing. Guys, my point is this. Becoming an entrepreneur today in America is very doable. And they don't call it the land of opportunity for no reason. But opportunity does come at a cost and it can be very financially risky 
at the same time. You must do research before you get into anything on your own. And it could be advisable that you also consider getting a partner. And if you've watched this video to the end, first off, thank you very much because that tells me that you probably have as a future entrepreneur or a current entrepreneur what it actually takes to grind and make this happen. Guys, feel free to comment below. I will write you back. Ask me the questions you got and I wanna leave you with one more thing. And I believe it was a quote from Dave Ramsey. And he said, live today like no one else so you can live in the future like no one else. Guys, that's all I have today. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name is William Doria. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, become a part of the notification squad. And until next time, thanks for watching, guys.